So this is the little MMORPG I've been working on and most of the things you see here, most of the entities such as NPCs like this bee here or my items or players, they are stored in a SQLite database. And right now I'm storing one entity type in one table. So there's a table for the players, there's a table for NPCs and so on. One of the drawbacks is that I manually need to maintain the tables. So whenever I want to add a new field to the, let's say, NPC type, where for instance, I'm going to add a new combat skill like range, then I need to go ahead and I need to change the type, I need to change the table, and in order to change the table, I need to add a database migration. And all of that takes quite some time, so I would like to be able to iterate more quickly so I can make faster progress in the game. That's why I was looking for a different solution on how to do data persistence in my MMORPG. During my research, I came across this really cool blog post about how Reddit used to store its data. And the title is Reddit's database has two tables, which sounds insane, but if you really read up about it, it, it makes sense. What they do is they have two tables. They have a thing table and a data table. And everything they have, comments, users, posts, and so on, subreddits, they built on top of that. So let's have a look at an example. We have the things table here, which has two columns, an ID and the type. And we have three rows in here, a user, a link and a comment. Remember, all in the same things table. And then we have the corresponding data table, which has three columns, an ID, the key and the value. And the way you can extract data from this now is by joining the IDs of the two tables. So let's see, we want to fetch the user here, which has ID one. So we go to the data table, we fetch all the rows with ID one and we get the username. So the user type would just have username and example user as a value. And we can do the same thing with the link. So we go to the things table, get the link, the link has ID2. So let's look up all the things that have ID2 in the data table. And there we see that the link has the fields URL, author, upvotes, downvotes, and the corresponding values for all of those. So this architecture allows you to store all sorts of things, all sorts of entities and objects without knowing the, their schema in advance. And the main reason Reddit did that was because at a certain point, they had just so many rows, so much data that changing tables, which means adding, or taking away columns just locked the whole table and it took forever. So I decided to use the same approach for my game for a slightly different reason. So let me show you how EntityDB works. So you start by creating a SQLite database. Then we go ahead and we create a EntityDB instance using that SQLite instance. One of two magical ingredients for EntityDB is type safe querying. So let's say we have players and items in our world. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to define the player and the item types. So I have two entities, player and item in my world, and I want to persist those using EntityDB. So what I need to create is an entity map. Okay, so I created an entity map using the player and the item. And I created those two types here. You will see in a second why those are useful. So now we can go ahead and actually put this entity map into the entity DB, which is gonna make it type safe. So if I wanna create a player now, I can just use the API. Calling the create method gives us something of type player. And this is possible because we are passing in the player type, which is gonna be prepended to the ID of the player. So let's update the player now. So this is all it takes to set in combat to true. And this is how I would find a player using its ID. And keep in mind that found has type player or null. And this is because I'm passing in this player type. If I change this to item type and here I would pass in some item ID, then found would be of type item. Another cool thing is that it allows you to select arbitrary fields. So let's say we have another player here that we are fetching. So let's say I want to get all the players that have name Joseph. And if I have a typo in here, then it will complain because it knows that the player type can only have these fields up here. And it also knows what type the actual field has. So if, I, if I'm looking for the name one, two, three, one, three, then it will not work because that's an, a number and you can only put in strings here. So this is the high level API of entity DB. It allows you to, to store, update, retrieve and query entities. Entities are things that have an ID. So if I remove the ID here, 
of player, then EntityDB complains that the entity map is not really a map of entities. Let's talk about performance, but before we do that, I need to mention something crucial about the architecture. I'm gonna have two data stores, one in memory and one in a file, because there are some things in the game that I don't really care if they go away, such as NPCs that are just randomly spawned in the world or dropped items when you kill an NPC. Like if the, the server goes down, those could vanish. I don't really care. But then there are things like players, users, usernames, passwords, how much gold does a player have in the bank and so on. These things I don't want to keep in memory. I want to store them in a file. So I'm going to have two SQLite instances each used by one entity DB. So I'm gonna have two instances of entity DB using their SQLite instances. So let's have a look at the numbers. I wrote this benchmark to see just how fast entity DB will be. And let me say that I'm quite surprised by the performance. So I'm testing creation and updating entities and I can create 10,000 entities about seven times per second. So I will be able to roughly create 70,000 entities per second using the in-memory database. Using the file backend though, I will be able to do only roughly 27,000. So I'm gonna create entities whenever a new player joins or a new item is being picked up. So it's not something that happens often. And when it comes to updating entities, this would be the case when you, for instance, change the XP a player has, or when the gold amount changes that you have in the bank as a player, then I would have to do an update. And using the in-memory backend, I can update 10,000 entities roughly seven times a second, which means I can, in a second, I can update 70,000 items. This is roughly the same for both in-memory and file backend, which is quite surprising. So in case this MMORPG is going to be super, super popular, I think I'm going to be able to handle the load with just those two SQLite instances. Let me know what you think about the entity DB approach, about the API, and I might actually create a spin-off project where I just publish entity DB because it might be useful in other projects as well. Thanks for watching.